Hi everyone and welcome to this week's class. So we are going to be looking at over the next few weeks this book called The Sleeper in the Spindle. And this is by Neil Gaiman and it's illustrated by Chris Riddell. And it's a fantastic book. It's really exciting. It's like a twist on a, uh, on a fairy tale, like a, a modernising the story. So we are going to be looking at this over the next few weeks and we're going to be creating dances about it. It's very inspirational. I'm going to show you some of the pictures and uh, we're going to be reading some of the text as well. So first of all, we're going to do our warm up before we do this. And we are going to come into the space. And what we are going to do is I'm going to call out numbers one to four. And each of these have an action attached to them. So when I call out number one, you are going to jog on the spot. If you've got space, wherever you are, you can jog around the room or around your little space, wherever you are. If you haven't got loads of space, you can just jog on the spot. Get our hearts going, keep breathing, good. Okay, if I see number two, you're gonna do star jumps. So nice straight stars, nothing floppy. Strong arms, strong legs, in, out, in, out. Yeah, good. You can do a little turn if you want to. Okay, when I see number three, you're going to draw your name with your elbow. So, if you've got a really long name, you might want to draw it quite fast. If not, just try drawing your name quite big. Don't forget to dot the I's and cross all the T's if you've got any in your name. I've got one I and a T. <laughs> so that's our name. And the last one, if I call out number four, can you show me a balance? So it can be any kind of balance. You have to hold it as still as you can. Okay, it can be a, back <laughs> a backwards balance, no cheating. If you can try and hold it without touching the wall or something, do. Okay, so anywhere you like, but try and balance. Okay, that's number four. So number one, jogging. Number two, star jumps. Number three, writing your name. Do, 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 do. Number four is balance, whatever you want to do. Okay, so I'm gonna mix these up. So let's start with number two. Let's do our star jumps. Good, keep breathing, good. Okay, number three, can you write it really big? Okay, good, so this is really good for using our levels as well. We're going up and down, well done. Hope you finished that one, number one. Jogging on the spot, or having a little jog around. Good, good, good. Let me get nice and fit. Well done. Number four, let's try our balance. So anything you can, really concentrate and hold that balance. Good. Number two, star jumps. Well done. Number three, here we go. Okay. If you ran out of time last time writing your name, maybe just write a little bit smaller. Good. Number one, jogging on the spot. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Keep breathing. You might be feeling a bit tired, but that's good. It's going to get us fitter. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Number two. Start up. Well done. Number four. Straight into a balance. Ooh, try and do a different one this time. I'm going to do some of that. Doesn't matter what it looks like as long as you're trying to balance on one leg. Well done. Number three. If you want to, use your other elbow this time. Ooh, that's tricky. Writing with your other arm. Good. And star jumps. Good. Da, 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 da. Well done. Well done. And we're going to end on a balance. So let's do one more. I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to go quite low. There we go. Hold that balance. Well done. Good. Shake out your arms. Nice shaky, shaky, shaky. Shake shaky. out your leg one at a time. God, shake out both at the same time, isn't it? Good, shake everything. Okay, we are going to be looking at some rhythms. Okay, and with our rhythms, we are going to do eight little claps. So just have your feet in sort of parallel, nice and relaxed. We're going to have eight claps on our legs. Five, six, seven, eight. We're going to have eight claps on our tummy. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to do eight little taps on your chest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
can do eight claps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So try not to speed up or slow down. Okay, we're going to try and keep the same beat. We're then going to chop that in half and do four. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, four, four. And we're going to go two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And we're going to go one, 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 twice. One, 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 one. Good. So try and stay nicely consistent with the beats. Okay, all together we're going to go eight, four, two, one, one. Okay, <laughs> this is good for coordination, your brain and your body, everything. Ready? Eight, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 Four. do that each week and uh, we'll try and speed it up love a bit of body percussion and we can add that into our dances later on that's a really nice thing to do so what we're going to do now is we are going to take a step to the side we're going to take a step behind we're going to take a step to the side and we're going to reach as high as you can if you haven't got loads of space just take little steps that's fine if you have got loads of space because wherever you are you can do giant reaches and that's really nice, okay? But if not, don't worry, you can just sort of almost step on the spot. So we're gonna go side, behind, side, reach. Side, behind, side, reach. Side, behind, side, reach. But I am going to do different levels. So we have our high reach, we have our middle reach, and we have our low reach, okay? Right, I'm gonna see if I can catch you out. Ready? So we're going to go side behind, side, middle, side behind, side, middle, side behind, side, side behind, side, side behind, low, side behind, low, high, high, <laughs> high, low, middle, low, high. Ah, low, side behind low, good, side behind high, side behind middle, side behind low, good, well done, okay, shaking your foot, give your shoulders the roll, so it's really good to use levels isn't it, because it makes our dances look really interesting, if we're on a high level, a middle level and a low level, so we're going to be thinking about that later on in our dances as well. So roll your shoulders backwards, good, and then roll your shoulders forwards, and take some deep breaths in and out as well. Good, reach up, okay, and see if you can go onto your toes and hold that, good. I can cheat because I can touch the ceiling. I've got a very low ceiling. We're going to drop our arms and put your heels to the floor. Well done, lovely. So, I want to talk about the sleeper and the spindle. So, this is a really interesting book, and I'm going to start. I wanted to show you the actual book because the detail is amazing in these pictures. And we are looking at our main character here, who is our queen. And she was treated badly by her stepmother. And even though the stepmother has died, she's still expected to live as society expects her to, ruling her kingdom and marrying a prince. Do you think she looks very happy about that? Hmm, she doesn't really, does she? And if you look here, you can see it's very formal in her room. Can you see she's got a very elegant, sort of gothic -y dress she's got to wear? And you can see this sort of a little motif, which is like a picture that's repeated, and we do that in dance as well, something that's repeated a lot, of sort of these skulls. I'm showing you that now, and see if you can see that throughout the book. It's really interesting. So this is our main character here, the Queen. And we are looking at today the idea of empowering 
people and especially this character who's the woman. And it's quite interesting because in a lot of fairy tales, the women are often rescued by princes and they don't really have a lot of say in what happens in the story. But this is what's so brilliant about this book is that she makes her own choices. And this isn't about women being better than men, but it's about her making choices and basically looking out for herself and empowering herself. So the main character isn't being rescued, she's actually rescuing herself. This is what we're gonna be looking at today. So she doesn't look very happy here, does she? And what happens is, I'm sure you will read this book in detail, but as she goes on through the book, she and her dwarf friends meet um, lots of different people and decide to go on a journey to go and find a, this sleeping kingdom, this kingdom where everyone's asleep and she's decided to go and see what's going on and see if she can rescue this other princess who's sleeping in the castle. And there's a really interesting line here. I'm just going to read it to you. And it says, she called for her fiance, so that's someone who she's going to marry, and told him not to take on so, and that they would still be married even if she was even if he was a prince and she was a queen. And she chucked him beneath his pretty chin and kissed him until he smiled. She called for her mail shirt, she called for her sword, she called for her provisions and for her horse, and then she rode off out of the palace towards the east. See, that's a really brave thing to do, isn't it? Everyone's expecting her to stay and marry. And she's saying, nope, I want to go on this adventure. And she called for her mail, which is her chain mail, which is like her armor to protect her, and her sword and her provisions, so her food. She got on her horse and she made that decision to go out and go on this adventure on her own. So she is a princess, which is quite an important role. So she's a queen, isn't she? But look, even on this adventure, she's not really treated like a queen. She's sleeping rough. So these are her three friends who are the dwarves that she goes on the um, journey with. And you can see here, she's sleeping in a haystack. She's not sleeping in the palace. She hasn't got servants anymore. So she's making these decisions which are hard but it's making her feel empowered because she's the one making the decisions and that's really important. So no one's telling her what to do. Although it's difficult and challenging, she's making those decisions to do it. And that's making her feel good rather than staying in a palace and being given everything, but actually she's not very happy. So the detail in these pictures is so amazing. I hope you can get a book and you're managing to have a look. And this is an amazing picture. This is um, where they're in the castle and these sleeping people are basically asleep, but they're sort of sleepwalking. And you can see they're very slow, but they are trying to catch them. And you can see here the dwarves, these three dwarves here, are not quite knowing what to do and who's taking charge into making decisions and taking control. It's their queen who's the leader. And she's running out saying this way, let's go this way. But you can see there's people hanging from windows and trying to reach, but they've all got their eyes closed. I don't know if you can see that really closely. They've got their eyes closed and they are running, um, trying to capture the princess and the dwarves. So there's so many interesting things and you can see here, see how dynamic she is. See her movement, she's running, compared to the very first picture we saw when she was in bed. She looks a bit scared, she looks a bit bored. She's sort of pulling the do the sort of sheets up, isn't she? Not really knowing what to do. So I thought, wow, this we have to do a dance about this because it's so exciting and so important. So I thought, what things make me feel empowered? What makes me feel good about myself? I thought one of the things that I really enjoy doing is cycling. I love cycling because it gets me from one place to the other quite fast, but also it gets me really fit. And I like to keep fit and healthy. And so I thought, oh, cycling, I like that. The other thing I love to do is reading. So I was really excited when I read that book because I thought, oh, I can read that book, understand all that information in the story, and then I can share it with you as well, so it gives me sort of knowledge and understanding of something I didn't know before, so I love reading. And the other thing I thought is caring. I really love caring for people and looking after people. And that's why I became a teacher, because I love 
caring for students and I love helping them learn, especially through dance. And so with those three things in mind, cycling, reading and caring, those are three things that make me feel empowered and excited and confident. So I thought I'm going to create movements around those. So instead of actually cycling, because we're not going to pretend to be on a bike, because we're not acting, we are going to look at the idea of cycling. And when I think of cycling, I think of wheels and circles. So I love the idea of showing really big circles with my arms and drawing really big circles with my arms. So like we did with our elbow writing our name, can you show me some really big circles with my with your arms. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do small ones and big ones and we can use this space and we can use the space behind us all over the place. It's like cycling all over the place. Good. My next one is reading. So I thought about opening pages of a book and then sharing the information. So opening pages of a book and sharing the information. So that's my reading. And my last one is caring. And I don't know about you, I love giving people hugs that I really love and care for. So I'm going to do a really big roll and a really big arm wrap. And it's so fun, I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to roll back, I do a really big roll. I'm going to see someone I really care about and give them a big hug. Okay, so that is our little, that's my little phrase, but I'd like you to have a go at it. So, we do our cycling, with our arms, big circles, small circles, all over the place circles. We're going to do our reading, so we're going to go um, open pages and share, open pages and share, and then we're going to do our caring, we come down, do a roll and hug, and roll back again, and roll back again, and hug. So I want to do two of those. Good. So we're going to try that with music, okay, to bring it to life. So here we go. Have a little practice. Okay. Here we go, the cycling. empowering dance. Those things made me feel good. Hopefully you'll feel quite good at the end of this class, by the end of this class, all these things. And what I want you to do now is get a piece of paper and a pencil if you want to and I want you to write down things that make you feel empowered or make you things that you feel good about yourself. So it can be school things, it could be reading, writing, art, dance, I hope so. Um, it could be anything, it could be being kind to people, it could be helping at home, it could be riding your bike, you can have the same as me, lots of people ride bikes, so it could be anything you like that makes you feel good. It doesn't have to be an academic thing, it can be anything you like, it can be a feeling that makes you feel good, if that makes sense. So if you um, wake up in the morning and you're really excited about something, maybe you can put that into movement. And that makes you feel good because it's good to look forward to things, isn't it, and be excited about things. So whatever you want, whatever makes you feel good, I want you to write those ideas down and then you're going to make a movement about each of those, 
feelings. So even if you come up with two, that's fine. You might come up with five and that's great. And just like I did, I need to put them together in movement to make up a little empowering phrase. So what you're going to do in a minute is pause me and I'm going to come back together and then we'll all practice our dances together. Okay, so before you go, one more thing. Can you think about an end position? Okay, so whatever your last position might be, so mine was the hug and that was my end position and I just knelt down and I just stayed there and then I was nice and still. Okay, and that's when you know your dance is gonna end. So we need a beginning and an end to our dance. Okay, so pause me. Great, so hopefully you've gone away, come up with your empowering phrase, and we're gonna try this with some music now. I'm gonna do mine again. If you haven't come up with your phrase, don't worry. It's a hard thing to do. So what we're gonna do is you can do mine again. I'm gonna do it with the music, or maybe you need a bit more time, and you can come back later on and do. Okay, so let's try with the music, yours and mine, and actually let's do it twice. So we're gonna have our end position, whatever it is, we're gonna get up, start again, and we'll go through the phrase twice. Ready? Here we go. gave you enough music to finish off there. Okay, well done. Oh, I'd love to see those. I bet they were amazing. I hope I will one day. Um, and I hope they make you feel really good and make you think about things that make you feel empowered, just like the queen in our story. She went on her adventure and she stopped being a queen in the castle and became an explorer. And we're going to carry on with that story. We're going to find out a little bit more of what happens in that book. So for now, let's come into the space and we're going to do some breathing and some stretching to cool down. So I've got some really nice, relaxing music. Okay. What I want you to do is make a really big star shape. As wide as you can. You feel like you're being pulled that way and that way at the same time. So you're really stretched. Good. Just relax your arms. Relax that arm, and then do a really big 
fantastic. Well, thank you very much. And we will carry this on next week. Thank you.